This is USBI News, your Virgin Islands connection. Hi everyone, thanks so much for joining us for USVI News. I'm Emily Matson. Acting VI Governor Tregenza Roach has ordered all flags in the territory to be flown at half staff in honor of former Governor Roy Lester Schneider. All U.S. and Virgin Islands flags on public buildings and grounds are to be flown at half staff. Owners of all private and federal buildings in the territory are also asked to fly their flags at half staff in honor of Governor Schneider. Roche said, quote, as a son of the soil, Dr. Schneider was a pioneer, dedicated public servant, and embodiment of Virgin Islands pride. His contributions personally and professionally touched many lives and had a tremendous impact on the Virgin Islands. Roche went on to say, as a distinguished Virgin Islander, Dr. Schneider's legacy was widely recognized throughout the territory, Caribbean, and U.S. mainland. His lifetime journey in the medical field and political arena was filled with many historic achievements. As we reported, the former USVI governor died Sunday at the age of 83 from health complications. He was the fifth elected governor of the Virgin Islands. He was also a respected physician, former Virgin Islands health commissioner for the VI Department of Health, and decorated Army Vietnam veteran. Dr. Schneider will receive a state funeral, and a schedule of events and services in honor of Governor Schneider will be announced very soon. A Florida judge has pushed back the drug smuggling trial of former British, Island, British Virgin Islands Premier Andrew Foy to next summer. A Florida judge granted Foy's lawyer's request for a seven-month delay for the trial, which was set to begin on January 9th. It's now been pushed back to July of 2023. Prosecutors and Foy's attorney are still going through a lot of evidence in the case, and Foy and his two co-defendants, who are charged with crimes including drug smuggling and money laundering. They were busted back in April of this year after a months-long sting operation by the DEA, which investigators say found the trio agreed to arrange safe passage of huge amounts of cocaine through the BVI in turn for millions of dollars in cash. As we begin this new week, active COVID-19 cases remain a bit high in the territory, but are on the decline from last week. According to the latest numbers from the VI Department of Health, there are 52 active cases territory-wide, with 24 on St. Croix, 27 currently on St. Thomas, and one active case on St. John. On Monday, the Health Department confirmed the territory's 127th death linked to COVID-19. An 83-year-old man on St. Thomas recently died of complications. The Health Department says the flu and RSV are also circulating in the territory, so they are urging you to get a COVID and flu vaccination or booster and do not gather for the holidays with loved ones if you are not feeling well. If your holiday joy is fading a bit at the thought of entertaining your kids over winter break, you are not alone. So here are some healthy ways to keep them busy without the use of screens this holiday season. School's out and kids are home for the holidays. What now? It's important to kind of have a plan of what you're going to do with your kids. Cleveland Clinic pediatrician Gina Robinson says to let them sleep in some, but try to keep them on a regular schedule so as not to throw them off when it's time for school again. She says keeping them entertained should not include loads of extra screen time. While a little more than usual is acceptable over the holidays, Robinson says it's important to set a limit. If your kids know beforehand that there is a time for screens and there's a limit on screens, then it doesn't tend to be such a big battle in the moment. Cooking or baking holiday cookies and treats allows for some time together. You can also go to the library to find some cookbooks or holiday books to read over the break. I can learn about how holidays are celebrated in different countries or different traditions. So it's a really good time to do that. Robinson says watching movies together, going to a museum, or volunteering to help someone else during the holidays are all healthy ways to keep kids busy. Just getting your kids involved and thinking about the idea of giving back and giving and how good that feels as well as receiving. And of course, with the beautiful Caribbean weather, it's always fun to get outdoors. 
And while Robinson says having a plan for the break is good, there's no need to plan out every minute of each day, she says, to make some time for relaxing as well. And for some parents with young children, cell phones are once again one of the most popular gifts this holiday season. But the debate remains, what's the best age for your child's first cell phone? Here's Adriana Diaz. 12-year-old Henry Berman is allowed up to an hour of screen time a day on the computer. But his parents, Creighton and Emily, are considering a cell phone. My wife and I have been kind of struggling with it because, you know, there's a lot packed into that phone. So. What are your concerns about your son getting a phone? We all know uh, digital technology and social media kind of destroys us, so I'm <laughs> just trying to figure out how to destroy him a little less. 42% of kids have a smartphone at 10 years old. By the time they're 14, 91% have phones. Katherine Perlman wrote First Phone. Her advice to parents, use a phone that allows you to limit features. It's developing habits sooner, but it's also learning a little bit at a time rather than getting your first phone at 13, 14 fully loaded and then trying to learn everything all at once. Devorah Heitner runs workshops on kids and phones. She says parents need to ask themselves some questions. Is your kid impulsive? Are they going to blow up their life with a few angry texts? Uh, is your kid able to be honest with you and accountable? And in the months before the phone, Heitner says discuss boundaries with your child and role play to teach them good phone manners. Oh, thank you. Back at the Bermans in Chicago, Henry's parents made the call. He's a very responsible young man, and given the extra responsibility of helping by walking his brother home from school, it just seemed, I didn't really think about the age, it was just, you know, the right time. Are you excited to get a phone? Are you a little nervous to get a phone? Um, a little bit of excited and nervous, like a little mix. Um, there you go, bud. Uh, You're like a grown-up, now you have to get a job and pay rent. Wait, wait, what? <laughs> Nice to get a job and pay rent. Yes, it really depends on the child, not necessarily the age, too. In consumer news today, high food prices are continuing to hit consumers in the pocketbook. Inflation across the board appears to be slowing, but food costs are still up. One of the largest increases is in the price of eggs, which has jumped just under 50 percent since this time last year, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Along with eggs, prices for other kitchen staples are also much higher than last year. Flowers up 25 percent, milk 15 percent, and butter is up 27 percent. All that means your holiday feasts are going to be more expensive than ever this year as families celebrate the holidays. The Better Business Bureau and animal rescue groups are warning of scammers trying to take advantage of people looking to give pets as holiday gifts. Here are five things to consider if a furry new companion is on your wish list. Think twice before you buy a pet for your loved one this holiday season. The Better Business Bureau and animal rescue groups are issuing warnings about pet scams. And according to the BBB, financial losses from pet scams are expected to approach $2 million this year. Unscrupulous breeders have gotten pretty good at trying to dupe the public into thinking that they're adopting an animal when they're in actuality buying from a puppy mill. Holly Sizemore from Best Friends Animal Society has these five things to consider before purchasing a new furry addition to your family. One, avoid online fraud. Many listings could be fake, and you could be paying for a pet that doesn't exist. So meet your new pet in person before exchanging any money. Two, know the year's long commitment, both with time and the cost of owning a pet. Basic costs such as food, toys, enrichment, those are all important necessities for pets. Pets can be affordable, but it is a cost that you need to anticipate and, and budget. Three, get the animal's health checked. Sizemore says dogs sold online often come from puppy mills and suffer from health issues due to poor living conditions and inbreeding. Four, make the sustainable choice. Consider saving a life by adopting from a local shelter or rescue group. And finally, consider giving the experience of picking out a pet instead of picking it out yourself. That is a great way to bring the joy of a new pet into the house during the holidays and allow the, the pet parent to choose the pet that best meets their lifestyle. 
And to reiterate, if you are considering a pet for the holidays, please adopt. The Humane Society of St. Thomas, St. Croix, and St. John all have plenty of homeless animals in need of a new home for the holidays. The Humane Society in St. Thomas is so overcrowded, it's also desperately seeking foster homes right now. Perhaps you can do that this holiday season.